In this tutorial we're going to create a splash screen and then it transfers over to a different scene using our scene manager class. Alright, so let's play that pump up music real quick. <laughs> because it has been way too long since I updated this series or done any work with my bring back for that matter. Uh, I've been incredibly busy. As you can see, it's, well, you can't really see, but it's like 3 a.m. right now and I felt really guilty and I needed to do a tutorial. So here I am and hopefully it's a decent tutorial, but no promises. So the first thing that we need to do is set up our scene manager variable since we've created a scene manager uh, we're gonna use it now. So we're just gonna call this scene manager Pretty awesome, right? And also we want to set up a camera called M camera Kind of default to put M's before your variables, but I rarely do that Anyways, uh, the reason we need to set up a camera is because when we pass in the information to our scene manager class If we go back over here our constructor takes in three parameters the base game activity the engine and the camera. So we need to create a camera and pass it into this constructor uh, to get our C manager going. So you'll see how this works out here in a second. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is go into our OnCrete engine options. Again, this gets called by default and this is where we set up our camera. All we're going to do is delete this guy out here. Um, we don't want it to be just a local scope or local variable within this method only. We're going to have it be our class variable okay so now it's gonna be pretty much the exact same camera everything's looking pretty good uh, we create our engine options as well here and we return those engine options which it's looking for so nothing's really changed since the way that we originally set up our game activity so let's go on to the on create resources previously all we did is we loaded or we called this function load graphics which is here we kind of set up all the graphics that we need for a game but instead what we're going to do is we're going to create our scene manager variable uh, get that set up um, so let's just comment out this load graphics here because we're going to no longer need that we're going to actually load the graphics from the scene manager class uh, that we set up if you guys remember I know it's been a while uh, so just go ahead and create our scene manager variable. We're going to set this equal to be a new scene manager, um, passing in the parameters that we need. For base game activity variable that we're going to pass in, that's going to be this class since this extends the base game activity. Um, so we're passing in this information within our scene manager so it knows uh, the base game activity. Next is the engine that we want to set up. For engine, we're going to create uh, or we're going to use the engine variable. As you can see, this comes from base game activity. It's not a variable we set up, but we have access to it again. Um, so this is something that comes with and engine. That's the engine that we're going to pass into the scene manager as well. So just put M engine. And lastly, our camera is going to be that camera we just set up again, M camera. Okay. Uh, so now we have constructed our scene manager which is pretty awesome. The next thing that we want to do within this create resources is instead of just loading up some graphics resources for our entire game we're just gonna load up the resources that we need for our splash screen. That way we can display the splash screen um, right away very quickly and then we can load our other resources as it's displaying our splash. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna relate to the scene manager that we set up here. We're just gonna say load splash resources and that's all we're gonna do uh, again then we're gonna say hey the callbacks done we've loaded our splash resources again I'm gonna jump over to the scene manager where we load our splash resources loaded up our ping and that we put in our resources from a previous tutorial and that's all it's doing so it's, it's pretty much just like this load graphics but again the beauty is we're only loading for the splash screen, not our entire game's resources as we'd have to do previously. So that's looking pretty good. We've set up our scene manager and loaded our splash resources. Now we're, we can either delete this um, since we aren't using it anymore or I'm just going to leave it there for now. Um, but you can leave a comment unused. Man, I can't type right now. All right, so again, once this callback is finished, uh, it's going to go to the on create scene, 
and here we can also kind of wipe out all this stuff um, because our scene manager is going to do this for us um, I don't know if you guys want to leave that in there as well I'm just going to copy and paste it uh, so you can see our old way of doing things and the new okay again this method is all it's looking for is a created scene and uh, you, you know we had the old way of doing that but I'm gonna be like hi Billy Mays here all we gotta do is relate to our scene manager wham and bam thank you ma'am we have created our splash screen scene okay it's that easy guys that's all we need to do again because within our scene manager uh, we set up all this stuff within the create splash scene here so that's all we're relating to again this returns a scene if you guys remember and again that's what this callback is looking for is a scene um, so again we could delete this stuff and save some space but just for future reference or if you want to look at the old way of doing things you can do that as well pretty self-explanatory um, again, we're calling this create walls method up here in the old way of doing things. We can delete that as well. Um, anyways, let's move on. The next thing that we want to do is populate scene. Again, this is after the scene's been created. We might want to create a sprite or something within the scene. Uh, we're going to, again, kind of wipe this stuff out. So I'm just going to comment out the old way, and we're good. So now if we load this on our application, it'll show our splash screen. It won't move to a different scene yet. Uh, that's what we need to set up within this populate uh, scene. We're just going to set up a little timer. And once the timer hits zero, it's going to go to a different scene. Okay. Um, and how we do this is we set up an event listener. Um, again, this will be to the M engine, that class or that variable we can use from the base game activity. And we're just going to say register update handler. What an update handler is, is it handles updates. And again, every millisecond we're updating our game. Not necessarily millisecond, but you know we're updating 60 frames per second or something like that. Uh, this update handler will be able to track that information and process it and handle an event if the timer hits a certain amount. So as you can see here, it's looking for an update handler that we need to register to our game engine. Uh, we're going to create a new handler which is going to be a timer handler and as you can see here we have a couple of options I'm going to put one that's uh, seconds and it has a callback timer as well so I'm going to click that there um, the seconds that we're going to allow this to wait is just going to be three seconds and it's going to be a float value so just, just put 3F and that's basically saying three seconds uh, the callback that we want to do is we want to create a new callback so we're going to say new itimer callback. Um, that's the callback it's looking for. Um, so just go ahead and enter that. And we're going to put a semicolon here to make sure we don't forget that. So again, just to go over what this is doing, uh, we're registering an update handler. Um, and we're creating a new handler, which is basically a timer. After three seconds, it's going to call this callback method. So whatever we do within here is going to happen after three, three seconds of the onPopulate scene method being called. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, what we're eventually going to do is have this handler not have a time. And once it's loaded all the resources for our game, then it's going to go to the menu scene. But since we don't have a lot of resources in our game right now, this is just kind of a test. Uh, a test to make sure our scene manager is working um, so we're just gonna wait three seconds not necessarily how long it takes to load all of our game resources but we're gonna wait three seconds and then we're gonna change the scene but to change the scene is gonna be pretty easy all we have to do is relate to our scene manager and we're gonna say load uh, I don't know what comes next after the splash screen probably the menu resources um, so load menu resources Let's change that, add an S to that. I know that's not our, our actual method, um, but just add an S to that and we're gonna change that within our scene manager class as well. Uh, so load splash resources, load game resources, and load menu resources as well. 
Okay, so it's just going to call this method right here. We aren't actually loading anything within our scene manager. Uh, we can do that later if we need to load some resources, but you get the idea. So save that, go back to our game activity, and we've loaded our menu resources. Uh, next, we're going to relate to the scene manager again, and we're going to say dot create menu scene, and that's going to return a scene to us. So again, if we go to the scene manager class, it's going to create our menu scene, which is exactly the same as our splash screen, except it's kind of a black background. As you can see here, zeros instead of ones. Um, it's going to be a black background, and it's going to return that scene back to us. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is go down here um, within our enum kind of handling. Uh, we're going to call this method and change to the menu scene. Um, that will actually relate to the men or the engine and set the scene to the menu scene that we set up here that we cr just created. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so let's just go back and do scene manager dot set current scene and again it has to be that enum that we set up within our scene manager here. Uh, we're going to relate to menu. Um, because again down here it will proce process that menu as loading up the menu scene. Um, so how we relate to that enum is just do all scenes dot menu. Pretty simple. Um, the last thing that we have to do is since we registered this update handler we also want to unregister that because we don't want to have a lot of update handlers or a lot of handlers registered to our game uh, that will slow things down. So we originally registered it and then we want to unregister it after the time has passed, if that makes sense. Um, so we probably want to do that first up here. We're just going to do, uh, we're just going to relate to the engine again, mEngine.unregister update handler. We're just going to relate to what's being passed in. Um, so it's going to be this name. I'm going to copy and paste that there. Um, so we're just unregistering this uh, timer handler that we registered up here. Okay. Um, so again, we unregister, load up the resources. Uh, we don't really need to do this one, um, but then we create our menu scene, and then we actually change it uh, with this set current scene method here. So that's kind of how our our scene manager works. Let's run this. And I'm actually kind of streaming off my actual phone um, because once we get into game development, I want to actually wow. use my fingers to test the game. Uh, I think it'll be better that way. Um, but this is kind of slow, so we'll see. But here's our splash screen. And then after three seconds, it goes to our menu scene. Both of them look pretty much the same, but. Our scene manager is working. That's how we use it. Pretty simple. Hopefully it's not too confusing. If you guys have any questions or it's not making sense, just uh, leave me a comment and I'll try to address them. And again, guys, I apologize for taking so long to start creating these tutorials. It would really help motivate me if you guys could share these tutorials with other people or um, even like if you go onto our website, just click some of these buttons over here. Definitely would appreciate it. It uh, helps me stay motivated it showed me that there's still a lot of interest in this and you guys still want the tutorials um, so it helped me to work harder and get more tutorials done and hopefully it bring more traffic to our site uh, so thanks guys for watching and I appreciate it click the subscribe button also the like button on YouTube we would love to see that as well so thanks again guys and uh, see you in the next tutorial